Airplane flaps. Put the flaps out. The flaps out. Drop the, the flaps. Drop the flaps. Why are you using the flaps, sir? What do they do? Because someday we might have to land with our flaps shut away. Here's the bottom line. They're pretty important. Let's dive into the world of aviation flaps. There are a number of factors involved when we talk about flaps, from taking off to landing, to while in ground effect or slow flight. I'm gonna start right away with the landing. Then we'll move on to some other situations like taking off. When an airplane's landing, there are obviously no brakes like a car. But one thing flaps do during a descent is act as sort of a brake. What they really do is they increase the airplane's drag. Drag being one of the four forces of flight. We have weight, lift, thrust, drag. With the flaps down, an airplane has very much more drag than it does with the flaps up. And hence it can be glided much more steeply without picking up speed. So let's say I'm on an approach to the runway, coming down like this, I'm a little bit too high. If I point the nose down to make my glide more steep, the airplane's going to pick up speed, which I don't really want. I want to maintain a particular approach speed. So one of the ways to get back on the glide slope that I want to be on and still maintain a select speed is to use flaps. You're essentially losing more altitude, but maintaining your airspeed once the flaps are on. So you're in more of a dive, but you can maintain your speed. And this can be practiced in real life or on a simulator if you want. An extreme example of this is a dive bomber. When the bombers would dive down to try to drop bombs onto aircraft carriers during World War II, they would have dive flaps as well. So that it would create a tremendous amount of drag because the airplane was going straight down to the ground, but that way they wouldn't pick up too much speed when they would go down to drop a bomb. Now there's more to it than just using them as brakes when descending. Flaps enable an airplane to land slower because like I said, they increase lift and lower stall speeds. So long story short, when the wheels hit the ground and the airplane's at 30 to 40 degrees of flaps, it will be able to stop in a shorter distance than not using flaps. The average landing speed for a Boeing 737-800 with flaps deployed is about 145 knots. So this can be higher depending on the plane's weight. When landing without flaps, the speed's more like 200. So it would take more runway length and more brakes if landing at that faster speed. And using more brakes runs the risk of overheating them and not using flaps runs the risk of overshooting the runway. This is why airliners always use flaps to land though. 99% of the time, it just gives them a lot more time and flexibility when they're landing to not have to use the whole runway and run the risk of overshooting it. Does that mean an airplane can't land without flaps? No. In certain situations, even huge airplanes have landed without flaps, like if they have a failure or some kind of electrical failure. It's not ideal for a plane that big, but they usually successfully make a no flaps, high speed landing on a long enough runway. You know, when you're talking landing at 200 miles an hour versus 145 miles an hour, it's a pretty big difference there. Now let's talk about flaps when taking off. With a takeoff, you have to consider both the ground run and the initial climb. In a small airplane like a Cessna 172, one could argue using flaps creates drag, so if you have a nice, smooth, paved runway, it's more efficient to just take off with no flaps You have if you have plenty of room. A lot of people take off without them in a 152 or 172, airplanes like that, very common. On a rougher surface like grass or dirt, you have more drag from the wheels. So probably better to get those wheels off the ground as soon as possible. You've got a lot of factors at play here. Density, altitude, are you in um, standing snow, slush, mud, grass, you know, what's the terrain? One of the best examples of how flaps are helpful for taking off is the art of the short field takeoff. Flaps can decrease stall speeds and increase lift. So when we get the airplane into the air faster upon takeoff, you can climb higher in a shorter distance. You can climb higher in a shorter distance. Think about that. So if you need to make sure you're gonna be clear of trees at the end of the runway, or you have a shorter field 
to take off from. This is when you would use this technique, like a short field takeoff. Look up takeoff distance performance chart for whatever airplane you wanna look it up for. It'll show you what to expect for your ground roll and distance to clear a 50 foot obstacle. Given the temperature outside, pressure altitude, and other factors, pretty cool stuff. These are charts that you would learn about if you're training to get your pilot's license and you would even get tested on. So when it comes to airliners, they're pretty much always going to use one notch of flaps on takeoff because too much flaps will create too much drag and it will actually have a negative impact. But some additional lift from a little bit of flaps is almost always a good thing. And then this all also affects your climb angle, what angle you're going to be climbing out at. Also, the field altitude matters. What, what's the altitude of the field that you're taking off from? High altitude airports and higher temperatures cause airplanes to use reduced flap settings sometimes to ensure the adequate climb performance. This requires accelerating at a higher speed before lifting the nose for flight, you know, rotation. There are um, many variables in aviation and I think that's what makes it even more fun. You've got weather, runway length, what kind of plane are you flying? What's the surface of the ground, density, altitude? How heavy is the plane? All of these things are variables at play when it comes to using flaps. Another one to consider when putting the flaps down while flying is they cause a temporary increase in lift. So if you lower them while flying straight and level, you'll probably notice the airplane ballooning upward a little bit, anywhere from 20 to 200 feet, depending on the type of airplane and how much of the flaps are lowered and vice versa when you put the flaps up instead of down. Now, some airplanes, like the 1946 Taylor Craft I've flown a lot, don't even have flaps at all. When you have a long enough runway and enough time to land in a smaller plane like a Cessna 152, you don't really need them. Like I train on a 8,000 foot runway. So in a Taylor Craft or a Cessna 152, I can actually make two to three landings on that runway. I would say the one advantage to not using flaps though, if you do have them equipped, is really when it's like gusty or turbulent, it can help to not use them. They do in increase induced drag, so they're adding more things for the gusts of wind to displace and bump against. I have tested this theory out in a Cessna 152 and found that it is true. Lastly, for the most extreme examples of the use of flaps and landing and taking off extremely short distances, this is where the stole planes come in, which stands for short takeoff and landing airplane. And a lot of people think these are a newer design, but the Germans were experimenting with these kinds of designs back in the 1930s. So the concept is nothing new. And flaps were being really experimented with and created and developed in the 20s. So anyway, these planes the stole planes have an insane amount of lift, crazy low stall speeds to land and take off in really short distances. A lot of these guys in the US out west have these kinds of machines to be able to land in various places throughout, um, throughout the wilderness, like even on river rock beds. Tight situations they can get in and out of. So start recognizing how your airplane flies with flaps and how it flies without them. The more you understand what purpose they serve and the effect they have on the airplane, you'll be able to know when to use them, how much flaps to use, and when you might not need to. And that's really all being a good pilot is all about outside of safety is it's not just knowing the checklist and going through the steps but actually understanding how these things affect the way the airplane flies. Hope you've enjoyed this short discussion about flaps and their purpose. Now sometime in the future, maybe we could look at all the different kinds of flaps because there's like 10 different kinds and it could be interesting to explore all the different kinds of flaps and the designs and the purpose, you know, the intention of the different designs. That could be interesting. So I'm sure we'll get to some more things in the future. You are clear for takeoff. Happy flying.